I hate, I hate that um the coverage, even the first preseason game, the amount of split shots I saw of Bronny James and LeBron. Oh. Like, oh, my God. I can't wait till they share the court together one time. And I'm the, the storylines are never going to go away because this is a historic thing. Like, I'm not shitting on the actual thing. I'm shitting on the coverage of it all. It's just already tiring, and we've only seen one game of it. Like, again, it was, it's a phenomenal feat. It's I can't crazy wait for the real thing. And the preseason is one thing, but, like, for them to actually be on the court together, mm-hmm. it's still going to be, like, one of the best moments. Like, they're going to have so many national TV games, and I'm sure the all of the first 10 national TV games is going to be a huge topic of conversation. They're going to – how many? How, how much you to bet? The first and second game, they're chanting, especially if it's a weird score or whatever, like, we want Bronny. We want Bronny. Yeah. And they're going to want LeBron out on the court. Yeah. Yeah. It's going to happen. Uh, my hate was that I hate that we're probably going to get another overhyped trade deadline. Um, I had forgot. When I wrote this, Robert Lincoln had recently had a quote about draft picks that he's willing to trade them. And then that's what made me put this because it seems like they still looking to make trades. And so that means that the trade deadline probably going to get a lot more rumors about them getting blah, blah, blah. And then all of a sudden it's going to end up in nothing. I think Zach Levine makes a lot of sense for y'all. And no, uh, I was more so looking at Jimmy. Uh, it's so tough, bro. I would think Jimmy would be a better fit. Because we have LeBron and Anthony Davis who's still, like, well, top ten players, top five players. Yeah. And then we have – we're just not that good as a team. Actually, Zach Levine would want paper would be the better fit. I just think Jimmy's the better player. No, for sure. Yeah. So <clears> – and then Jimmy's also an expiring deal. But that's also – it depends on how much they value that. Like, mm-hmm. do the Lakers want to have cat spaces all season? Or do they want to keep what they got? So it's a it's a move. Maybe the Heat do want those three first round picks. Would they trade three first round picks for potentially half a season of Jimmy if it if they feel like we get him? I feel like things would have to go drastically. Like you, they would have to get to like a really good start. Just like we want to get over that hump. Because I thought their whole plan was just like let's not rush on it too. You know what I'm saying? Like let's kind of play this patient in between game and see what happens. Apparently. But I really gonna know how thirsty y'all are. Definitely. You know, That's them. the thing, though. The Lakers <laughs> want to win. But I also think that Jimmy Butler is about to come in and dominate again. So maybe he's not even on the trade market, genuinely. But you know, Zach Levine gonna be there. You know, Zach Levine on the trade market. <laughs> Zach Levine don't even have a house. A house here. He knows he's on the trade market. Yeah, he he chilling at my crib right now. Actually, <laughs> yeah, the whole base. He probably just got a nice little condo he renting because he definitely sold his mansion. So that's all. To uh, Mike, he sold the mansion to Mike. Oh, to me, you yeah. sold you. You got it. Yeah, I was talking. Remember, we did that shoot with him. I was talking with him afterwards. Did you get a new phone? No, I didn't. Oh, you just took that. I case took that off. little ass case off. You took it the back of my phone. Oh, okay, I can't. I don't know how y'all operate. How you operate with no case? I've never well, had a case. Well, he has a crack in the back of his phone. So I, I do. Like I do because I thought it was cool. I have a lot of chargers in my house that are like wireless chargers, oh. and like I'll take off my case to put it on there, yeah. and then I'll just grab it. Oh, I can't do it. Uh, for the Nuggets, um, I love that we just get to see the Nuggets with Nikola Jokic without KCP. I want to see how it works. Like, I think that even him without KCP, we're going to still see magical stuff from a, from Nikola Jokic. And I think we also going to get, like, this bounce back season from Jamal Murray. Because I feel like we kind of didn't get the full version of Jamal Murray last postseason. I think also when he went to the Olympics, he also didn't play that well. So I think... We're getting Jamal Murray coming into the season with, like, a chip on his shoulder. And he also kind of has to play like that. Without KCP, he, somebody has to make up that production. So I think Jamal Murray's going to be that guy that really steps up and we're going to see a different version of him. Yeah, I, I think people have kind of overblown the Jamal Murray stuff. Like, obviously, he was pretty bad in the playoffs other than the two game winners. And then he was bad in the Olympics. But he also was, like, dealing with a hammy, right? Didn't he have a big injury? That he yeah, was trying he to did. fight through. You always have a ham. It's always with something, them right? <laughs> something. I just could imagine like already having like a like a knee or a band like an injury like that where you know it slows down just how you move. Mm-hmm. And I just got the best defenders in the world on me hounding me. Yeah. Like it's gonna be tough. <laughs> um, the thing I'm excited about, or they, I mean, they still just have the best player in the world. Yeah. And I was just thinking about throughout history, like going through who was the best player in the world at this time. Obviously, LeBron was the answer for like all of it. <laughs> <laughs> but every single time you have the best player in the world, you always have a chance. Um, even with them losing KCP or Brucey e. Brown or Jeff Green the year before that, and them trying to usher in the uh, the Tysons of the Strothers and all of these Brown, Brown, all these younger dudes. 
as long as Jokic is on the court, you have a chance to win every game and you have a chance to win every series, mm -hmm. even if the supporting cast isn't as good. Honestly, that game against the Celtics, it felt like the Celtics were playing a better game, but the Denver was still in the lead. Like, they were still just right there. And it looked like they was a team that was, like, still kind of shaking off the rust. So they're going to be scary. The one thing I love is that Christian Brown is going to step up for this team. And I, you said a lot about KCP, but he was taking the defensive assignments even uh, – Yesterday, he mm -hmm. was guarding a little bit of Jalen Brown. He's guarding some of Jason Tatum. He even came up with a block. So I think he's ready to take on that challenge.